I've come out into the garden on what is a beautiful, bright, sunny afternoon to do a few little jobs. And I thought you might like to see how things have progressed. It's now in the last month of summer here in Tasmania. And as you saw a lot of these things planted, you might like to see how they're doing. Now the first thing I'm doing today is pulling these onions. Now you may remember that when I planted them, I planted them in clumps. I had grown the seed in egg cartons and simply broke up the egg carton and put them in, in their clumps and didn't do any more. So how have they gone? Well, look, as you can see, there's some really big ones. There's also some here that are quite small. I think there's even smaller than that, yeah, about the same. I don't mind this range of size. The smaller ones tend to be up this end where that's a little bit overshadowed by the other bed. But hidden amongst these parsnips, which are really taking off, is a lot more of these big ones. So what I'm going to do is take them and lay them out in the sun. They come out really easy. Now that the the stalks are falling over, it's time to, to take them out and let them dry off a little bit. I can then find somewhere to hang them and we'll have some onions to use over the uh, autumn and winter. Now I class these as a success, even though there's some smaller ones, because they've produced, I think, quite well. And it was really simple to grow them this way putting that seed into the uh, egg cartons, putting out the clump was so easy to do. And what I want to do is grow a lot more of these, probably next, uh, so yeah, more hiding under there. Next spring, I'll put uh, hopefully quite a few more. I would like to be able to produce enough onions to last us through winter if I could. Uh, I'm not sure how much area that's going to require. It'll be interesting to see what sort of weight we get from these, but I won't weigh them until they've dried out a little bit. It's interesting to see what's hiding here amongst the parsnips. There's quite a few in here. So as you can see, I put these fairly close. The clumps were only about a hand span apart and they've swollen out, done really well growing, just in the compost on top of the soil, no dig. More under there. The parsnips, of course, I will harvest later in autumn and over winter. These, I didn't plant them, they're self-sown parsnips. And they're doing really well. Right, well that's all the onions. I'll leave this to the parsnips now. I always love this climbing bean. It's a blue lake and I grow it every year. They're a little late this season. They're just coming now. I'll be able to pick some probably in the next couple of days. But there's lots of flour and there's going to be lots and lots of beans now over the next few weeks. So that's great. But the weather we've had, we've had a lot more rain this summer and that's kept temperatures a little bit cooler on the average and that's slowed growth a little bit. Where I really notice it is with the tomatoes. Here in the tomatoes they've been growing crazy but the development has been a little bit slower and they're only just beginning to ripen some now. Uh, not many, just a few around starting to come. They're developing though and so 
there's going to be lots of tomatoes soon but it is i think probably at least two to three weeks later than it normally would be so i'll spread this out in the sun and have a look at them there's a fair amount there and some small some big as i said i like that one it's a monster they can stay here in the sun until the tops have dried a bit and then I'll find somewhere to hang them up where they've got plenty of ventilation. Probably in an old onion bag is generally a good idea. The air will flow through or on a mesh. Sometimes the tops have come off so you can't tie them up by the tops. But that's the onion crop. That was about two and a half metres and there was two rows of clumps. So not too bad. If I could plant a decent area, I think I could produce quite easily sufficient onions to last us for at least six months. Another job I've got to do is run through these strawberries and take out some of these runners that are coming. Normally, when the strawberries are actually in picking season, I get rid of the runners as I'm picking. But they are in between seasons now. The main pick has finished and we are sort of getting some growth. We'll next get some flower again and a second crop. But the runners are going crazy and I need to take them away to uh, improve that crop. So it's a quick run over. It doesn't take long to uh, knock these runners back. Occasionally you'll find a strawberry, that's a bonus. So what am I doing? I'm just looking for the runners and growing on the edge like this, as I have this year, it's easy because they tend to hang over mostly, but there will be one or two that are going off in other directions that I just need to pull out and cut. And very quickly, a few weeds to be pulled at the same time. The worst of it's done and the energy is back into the plant keep growing they've done fairly well this season and i'm quite happy in most respects we didn't have to water them very much with this watering system that i put in i think i only used it about a couple of times so far uh, maybe i'll still have to do it yet uh, but because of the amount of rain that we've had They've been getting plenty anyway. And they certainly do like that. There's an occasional one that I'm leaving one here because I've got a gap where a plant failed and so I'll let the runner take over from that. Well, it didn't take long and now the strawberries are set for a second crop. There's a few flowers there already, but Shortly they'll come out with a lot more and we'll get another burst. These raspberries are looking pretty wild. We haven't had very many raspberries from them because it was the first season being new plants. They're only small and so it's just been an odd one. But these canes are going to be next year's crop and there's plenty of them. I'll need to trim them, tie them up over winter and we should get a much bigger crop of raspberries next year. Oh, there's a raspberry. You found one? Yep. Yay. Here's the chickpea crop. While we're going on to the next job, I thought we'd have a look at how this is going. You may remember that I planted the first lot of chickpeas that completely failed to come up, or almost, and I had to replant a second time. They came up fairly well the second time. And they're now, well, still some flowers, but quite a lot of pods on. But they have really suffered under the heavy rain and wind that we've had as well. So instead of standing upright, these bushes are all laying down. I'm rather concerned at this stage that when it comes to ripening and harvest time, that it may compact and be too damp. And that may result in some uh, fungus or something like this in the actual peas. But 
At this stage, not too bad. It'd be much better if they were standing up properly though. Let's have a look at the red kidney beans. These red kidney beans have really suffered primarily with the wind. The wind came in, we had some really strong winds a couple of weeks ago and just blew them over, basically breaking off the roots and you'll see that some have died back because of it. The rain has kept them alive to some degree, but yeah, there's really been some damage from that wind. But the good side is that there is a lot of beans on there and I've still got hope of getting some crop off this. I think I simply need to learn some better techniques in growing these beans. They are, well, I would probably call them a semi-climber. You'll see here that they put a short climbing uh, frond up. It doesn't go very far, but with wind that is a problem because the wind then blows Daddy, them around. Look Dad, we got some Yeah, there's lots and lots of it's beans in there. Heaps of up, beans. So I think I need to take one of two approaches. One would be to come and cut those little uh, tendrils off that are going up so that keep it just as a bush. The other would be to run some strings and allow them to actually attach themselves which may help in terms of the wind to actually keep them upright. So next year I'll experiment more in that way. It's too late for this crop. We'll see what the harvest is like, but I think I'm going to try these again. It looks like the actual crop per area is going to be a lot better than we get from the chickpeas. We've come into the greenhouse here to do a couple of jobs. The main one is to pick some cucumbers because there's lots there that need to be picked. But first, this bed is looking pretty ugly. Uh, what I've got in here is some things going to seed. Now, some of them I want to leave, but this one, which I think is a, a fennel or dill, I'm not 100% sure. I really don't need there. It's looking really messy. And so I'm going to actually take that out and that'll tidy this up a little bit, though the parsley and the lettuce still need to develop their seeds. Coming past the capsicum bed here, you can see that there is lots and lots coming, particularly this plant's got heaps and heaps. One beginning to colour up down there. The larger bell type peppers also are growing and yeah, a really good crop. Quite happy with that. Samuel, what do you see? I see the right Let's look underneath. Icing. That's where the crop is, isn't it? Yeah, look at these yummy red ones. Lots and lots there. They're now, very hot, but the well, problem is what? they're meant to be hot, but Daddy tried one and it was not hot at all. That's true. Some of them seem to be hot and some of them are not. But Daddy ate one. That was red. They were both cold. red. I ate red ones that were hot and some that were not hot. Yeah, but they're and red. they're off the same bush. So yeah. there's a mystery. Okay, so for the main mission in here is to pick some cucumbers. And yeah, it's a bit of a search them. to find these nice big ones. Can you yeah. put it in the bucket yeah, for me, Samuel? Uh, that one can grow a bit more. Okay, any more Another day or two. Any more yeah, there's a lot here. Especially with the tomato. Tomato and cheese and cucumber goes lovely together. My mum says tomato and cucumbers go nice with a slice of cheese. Now, amongst these cucumbers, I notice there's a bit of white fly and yeah. occasionally in the greenhouse you do get a little bit normally it's not enough to be a problem and i normally don't have to do anything about it but that. there's a little bit too much here yeah the i usually find that spraying with a little bit of seaweed is um, sufficient to uh, knock it it's sort of sticky and oh, the seaweed extract spray yes for your little ones yeah, they can turn, they're not tiny enough, Dad. You could turn them into chickens. You could. Yeah, 
But this isn't the time of day to do it. Yeah. It's uh, nice early nice in the morning when the plants are not under stress. Yeah, and we got a lot of cucumbers. Yep, we do. Yeah. Well, we've got a good haul of cucumbers, but it's pretty hot in here, so I think we'll get out and find yeah. somewhere cooler. I've come down here into the pumpkins and as you can see there's lots of weeds there's heaps of work here that needs to be done i'm not quite sure when i'm going to find the time to do it but i really do need to come through and knock out particularly a lot of this nightshade and give the pumpkins more of a chance to overrun things but they are working on it they are growing and there are a few pumpkins setting as well over here you'll see the scarlet runner beans which I planted. Let's go and have a closer look at those. As you can see, these scarlet runner beans are starting to really make some headway. There's some nice beans coming and still more flower. There's a couple that missed here. Uh, I think that might be the only ones that missed. Though this one seems to be a bit behind. But mostly they've gone up. Being the first year, of course, it's fairly sparse, but mm. there's beans and we'll see what sort of crop. And we'll see, we oh, hope, no. these will come back next year and beyond no. for better and bigger crops. So that's what's happening in our garden at the moment. It's been a rather unusual season and it's going to be really interesting to see what the harvest is like uh, when it comes.